You never stop thinking about whom. It's just that feeling you get when you're back into your own home community. You know that I heard from my grandparents about the lake, the strong connection to the lake and and to the waters around here. You know, it feeds us, it nourishes us. There's stories that my grandparents shared with me about the spirits that live in the water and respecting the lake and you know, even before we go out to lake it and stuff, it's always the same out before we go out. Well, Axe has always been our home, you know, forever. People come back to the Lax. Oh. above everybody else in the whole world. The money dukes put us on this earth as Anishinaabe for a certain purpose. The Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe means to me that we are one of the best uh, reservations tribes in the country. We have a lot of talented people, a lot of people that have a lot of humor, a lot of people that have a lot of artistic abilities, a lot of wisdom. When you go out on the reservation and you look around, everyone there you see that has really great talents to contribute to the success of this band. If you look at the big picture, the eons of time that have gone by, you are given the gift of being born now. And in that, you're also given responsibility to be a Mohawk band member, reflecting your band, your culture, you know, in, in, in the best light. It's, uh, it's a great honor. We have a striving and good culture, a lot of good teachings. Respect is um, one of our cultural values, and I think that's the bottom line. Being an indigenous person, we always protect the, the environment and the land, take care of our Mother Earth because she takes care of us without her. We wouldn't survive. Part of our our beliefs and our traditions that we take care of our our land always. language would be more useful and helpful to learn, especially if it's hands-on. If you notice that a lot of those kids that are in trouble, they have never attended the ceremonial dances or have followed the traditions. The biggest hope I have is to have our young ones learn the language and the culture so they in turn can pass it on for their future generation. That would be so good if we can see our young ones speaking the language and sitting at the ceremonies, listening and learning and observing. Well, when you, I think it, it is helping because now you're the kids, you know, joking, you're teasing each other, saying stuff in Ojibwe, you know, they're just having fun with it. 
I think it's respect and behavior. Geez, how, how could I say this? Um, it seems like, as I said, you know, they're more respectful when they don't the language. There's some kids that, you know, they're just kind of hard to teach them, but they get it. They still want to learn it. You know, when you just live with it, you know, you don't even think about it. The kids that go to school here, they do respect the elders and the, the Native Americans that work here. No, they would come in, we'd do the sage, we'd do the pipe, and like some don't even know what sage is, didn't know what sage is, that was back in the day, but we have it here now on a daily basis, so never somebody, somebody wants to come and sage down, they can. My dad was a good teacher. One of the things that he taught me was always be kind. Always be kind to Indian people. He always said if you have to go out of your way to make a person feel good and do that. We talk about honesty, humility, truth, wisdom, love and compassion, respect, bravery, and all of those are attributes of life that everyone should have. In order to really fulfill your true Indian message, in the world today, I believe that you've got to be an active participant in the community. Know what your community needs, know who your community is, and then support that community. To achieve honesty within yourself is to recognize who you are and what you are. I think each one of us are actually, uh, we have been born with gifts, and uh, we need to kind of understand what those gifts are so we can share. Every day in school, they beat into our heads uh, respect, care, and dignity. So I lived that. It came to me and it just kind of stayed there. Just, but I take that a little bit further. I try to treat everybody that way. Everybody, even those that are suffering, I, especially them. Yeah, there's been some setbacks, but then I take a step back, I find out what did I do wrong, and I learn from that, and I continue on. How can we frame our staff's interaction with you know, young people, community members, parents? You know, we, we started talking about the seven values, and you know, right after that, you know, that really that started to click with me. I mean, however, you're raised, however you're brought up, but there's still there's still a positive, you know, connotation and meaning behind it. You know, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it with the kids. Let's talk about it amongst each other. You know, what it means. Whatever background somebody's from, that those seven values mean something and there's weight to each of those. We focus on our children and we take care of our children because they are the future. We want to make sure that we instill in them all of our values so they're honest, they have humility, that they're brave, they have compassion and love for each other, they have respect. We want to make sure that we we help them grow in, in, in all aspects because they have a lot of talents as well and gifts, and we want to make sure we nurture those. You know, it's really up to the young people to decide whether or not they, they think it's important or not they want to keep it. My name is Kay Gizis. I'm going to get to the office and get to the school.